flashbook. Why? To dig into the question you got there from, is it? You want to start there? Michael? Yeah, why not? How about hello, everybody? Hello, Michael. And everybody. Yeah, let's start there. You want to start there? Okay. Yeah, and then we'll go back into your board thing, I guess, if you well, want. I don't know. We'll check my notes and see what it looks like. Check the notes. That's a question. I want to sit in a new chair. <laughs> when you're starting to see this come together, this has got to go way up. Sh shout out to Keith. Keith. You don't know Keith, but Keith sold me this neat, this neato table. Well, thanks, Keith. And it he fits in here really. And well. he thought I was enjoy. funny. He Did thought he? I was funny, so of course I told him about the YouTube show, and uh, he sent me an email, and I sent him back um, a link. Hello, Keith. Shout out to Keith. He was a cool dude. Were you funny? And I liked it. Well, I don't know. I like the table. It's kind of neat, it's, but it needs modified. Yeah. It's blingy. Blingy. It's blingy. And you're on page six of my notes. Mark Modre. Oh, it's for Mark? Mark Modre, thanks for the video, guys. Glad to hear you will be doing board repair. Could you possibly start with the Williams Power <coughs> Supply Board and go over what voltages you should have at the inputs on the board? Flash has three gray wires going in, and the transformer I bought from you has six gray wires coming out of it. That was a laser ball, by the way. Uh, I am sure the voltage I need is somewhere in those six wires. Just not sure what combination it is looking for. Mark Modre. Can you dig it? Well, it does cover that in the flash power wiring. Neat. So, and it does show colors. There's three gray wires and two yellows, two reds, and three, no, well, two blues and two whites. What's it all mean? Well, two whites go as a pair. And there, of course, everything that, that comes out of a transformer is alternating current. Whenever you say, of course, don't don't include me. The two whites are... Because I'm tuning out already. <laughs> are you talking about out. electricity? The, tuning, uh, <laughs> the two whites are 90 volts mm -hmm. AC, and the two blues are 13.5. All these voltages are approximate. Okay. Does Mark have a flash book? I don't know. You should have one to refer to it because it gives you a nice diagram. Tip, tip number one. It. Can you see it? Get a book. See it? That goes way back to Arcade Russ who said, get a book. You yeah. had the book. Pair of reds, 25.5, and then there's three grays. And there's three of them coming out of there because there's two grays and then one gray-white. The gray-white is the center tap, which means you use it to go to either the one gray or the other gray to get 9.3 volts AC. In other words, gray-white to gray is 9.3, gray-white to the other gray is 9.3. Uh, and then the pair of yellows is, of course, uh, general illumination. They usually do color code there. GI is yellow. That's 6.38 uh, VAC. So. Um, six wires is what he said? Six wires. I have no idea what that would be because the book says three wires unless there's extra ones soldered onto it or is there actually six? And you got to ID the wires coming out by color uh, code. And there's more than six wires coming out of the transformers. Looks to me like there's two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven wires comes out of the flash transformer. These would all be these would all be taps. Taps on the transformer. They're wires. Yeah. Uh, the solid state transformers don't have the uh, metal. Oh, they come out, so it comes they out come to the connector? They come out, they're wiring that's coming out. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, those are outputs. There's also wires that feed the transformer, which there should only be two. You know, because that's 120 volts in, and then these are outputs. Because a transformer has an input and an output side. Now, some transformers have multiple inputs because, and you've got to ID which side is which. Uh, because they were made for different country voltages, okay? So some transformers would have more than two wires coming in. Need a book. Okay. Does he need a laser ball book then? Probably, yes, because things might have changed. Yeah. So we'll have to follow up on that again, maybe, because we may not have answered his question. Yeah. Yeah, if that's what he's doing, I don't... You, you probably had... to bring a flashbulb. I know I did. 
You probably laser, have, if he's doing laser ball, you need a laser ball book because it might be different. Do you have a laser ball book? I might. I don't know. <laughs> probably. I'm not sure. Most likely. So all right, I'll I'll take this book back. Okay. And, uh, I'll bring a laser ball book for the next uh, next time, huh? You know what makes for really boring to watch stuff? What? When you have no idea what the, what they're talking about, the people that you're watching. Oh well, this is for Mark. Okay, well okay, I, I well, hope he enjoyed it because I tuned out. Let's move on to the next um, tidbit. All right. Well, I guess we're going to skip his his power supply board for this week, but we will. Can we start with that next week? Yeah. Because we're not at your circuit board bench tonight. We're here. Well, I wouldn't do any good there anyway. You mean the board itself? Yeah. Well, you don't need this circuit bench thing for that. Well, you want to pull it out and talk about yeah, it? Pull it I mean, out and no, talk about it. I don't need to be there. I'm okay. not going to physically do anything. Okay, well this is part one of we're starting on the power supply board, which is a William I actually 3 through 7 power supply board. It might be nice to uh, to do board repair, and I, I know he said he's glad to see it, but I frankly don't care much for rebuilding these. Okay. Uh, the reason is a power supply in this day and age uh, was manufactured under the most technology they had. The replacement is much better designed than this. There are a few reasons. Um, First off, Williams, in order to make this cheaper, uh, only used a half-wave bridge rectifier circuit, which is half as useful as it should be. Bally, even in the day, made a full bridge wave rectifier with four diodes. It cleans up the uh, AC more. Uh, they did this to be cheap. And you can tell they compensated by putting a real huge 5-volt filter cap, which is not really needed if you do a full wave bridge. Uh, but anyway, to rebuild these is, is a physical, uh, physically simple. You, you want to replace, well, this is a burned up connector for a GI. You want to replace some of these uh, round pin uh, edge uh, board headers because uh, they're round and your connector uh, that goes on the header is got flat uh, tabs to it. So a flat surface on a round pin, you're going to lose contact surface. So you want to replace these with square headers. Does this show any good when I don't participate? I don't know. Right. Didn't know you went. What did, I, what did I miss? So and then the next thing you want to do is replace your electrolytics. This is a very early type A power supply. It's used in very few Williams machines, but there are some that need this. And now the new power supplies that are made aftermarket will work in, in all of them, but if you're rebuilding one of these old Williams power supplies, you, you have two types. The early ones are identified by having the AC um, capacitors here, the uh, acrylic ones. Um, and what these are is for the display circuit. You have to have this and there's probably a few other components on here, I think these diodes, uh, that are needed for like hot tip and such if you're going to use uh, uh, Williams OEM power supply. Uh, to rebuild one of these costs probably about 35 bucks in parts. So you got to watch when you can buy a new power supply for a hundred. Uh, that has a much better uh, design because of the uh, newer technology. Hey, take a break. Okay. Okay, what do you got? Got a puppy. You want me to keep? You got a puppy? Um, no, man. I'm no. Please don't. Please don't. No. No. We lost half our subscribers in that segment. It, oh. they, they were watching. They went, "What is this? This boring." Well, you told me to go over it with Mike. Okay, good job. Did it, hold on. Or Mark. I don't think. But can you answer this question? What voltages should you have at the inputs on the board? So you didn't. You were started to talk about rebuilding it, which is not really what he's. I mean, he's interested in that, it sounds like, um, but this question was more specifically, what voltages should he have at the inputs on the board? At the inputs on the board, 
Mark's getting special treatment. Is that the last question about this? Is it? Because uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm, huh? Yeah, what? You're not feeling it? No, it, it's immaterial. <laughs> um, the inputs that go to the board are going to be uh, 18.7 uh, AC, and this is on header pin 3P1, and it's also going to have uh, 28. Uh, well, let's see, AC. Um, it's going to have 18.7 on another connector, I guess, for sound. Um, no, is it is it uh, legal for you to share that information? I don't know because it's in the Williams book, man. Okay, um, if you got a book, Good you're going to see um, connector three J six. Actually, is what that was, not three P one. Three J six is going to have uh, logic power bus. And that is going to get um, 3J6. <laughs> no wonder you didn't want to do this. Yeah, no, you need what a book, man. What, what are you hell? doing? I'm you're, not a you're, pin guy. You're reading spaghetti over there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a uh, electronics guy. I don't really... I seek this stuff out when I need to. I don't really want to say it. Okay. <laughs> Power inputs are done at 3J1 and 3J2. That's the two little standoff pins here. That's the. These are all outputs. These other edge border. Okay. Yeah, yeah, these yeah. are where the inputs are. Okay. And you're only gonna get. Um, well, 3J2 is just ground. It has no input. So actually, it's only one connector. 3J1. And it's a 12-pin header, and they don't use all of it because one's a keying pin. And if you look on it, you're going to get your, uh, let's see, 3J1. Then you got to go to, then you got to go to the transformer. It's going to be 18.7 volts. Um, it's a 12 pin connector. Let's see, 90 volts. Three J1. Yeah, it's a 12 pin connector. It's going to be 90 volts AC on pins four and nine. It looks like uh, 28 volts. Well, that's DC. Well, that ain't it. I guess just 18.7 on pins 10, 11, 12, and 90 volts on pins 4 and 9. Please consult your book to verify that. Yeah, mm. I don't know. Yeah. They jump all over the place to give you what goes on there. I wonder if we could scan that and put it out, post it on the internet somewhere, right? What do you think? I don't know. Anyway, that's the that's the uh, power input. Okay, it's be put it away. Fun. We're done with that. That was fun. Uh, no, not really. Your book's falling apart. Yeah, not. <laughs> this type of stuff. Uh, Good luck with that. It, 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 yeah. We're here. It's necessary, but only. As you come to it, um, which is consult an expert. Here's one. Consult a genius, Todd Harrison. Todd Harrison from ToddFun.com. Oh, Todd Fun. Yeah. Todd Fun. Um, on last week's episode, when when I uh, sounded like I didn't know what I was talking about, but kind of did, but kind of didn't. I don't. I don't much of the time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you were measuring voltage drop, and I said. Uh, you were you were measuring the voltage drop on the super flight at the at the fuse block. Oh yeah, 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 neat. Okay. neat. And I said something like, "What are you doing? Measuring resistance?" Because I was it was a stupid question. Um, but at any rate, he followed up on this and wrote this nice little thing. 
Neat. says, yes, measuring voltage drop is not the same as taking resistance measurements. No. You would want to take resistance measurements with the power off and voltage measurements with the power on. Mm -hmm. Finding a voltage drop across a fuse does show the fuse is introducing some resistance and the higher the drop, the more resistance, so your statement still makes sense in the video. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, also there are resistance... Um, well, let me finish his statement before you say what he's going to say. And voltage drops across the fuse holder also. What? Um, fuse? fuse holder. Fuse holder. What about it? I ran into it yesterday. That's why it was fresh in my head. What happened? Well, I had a problem where the fuse was fine, but the fuse holder was corroded. And it, it was clamping the fuse tight, but if you look close at the shoe where the fuse goes around, it was corroded. And there was 13 volts on one side of the fuse and two on the other. So it wasn't the fuse that was a problem as a holder, but yeah. Um, okay. You want to do a voltage measurement with it live rather than a resistance check because you're not putting any power to it. It's more real. Okay, well let me finish. I'm only halfway through it. Oh, okay. I had no idea what you were just talking about. Oh. Uh, a fuse with a large voltage drop would be bad, however. It will must show some resistance as that is how a fuse works. Fuse works, yeah. Fuses have small resistance which normally increases with current load and temperature. If the current is high enough, the metal that the fuse is constructed from will build up heat due to resisting current flow to the point where the fuse element melts quickly above its amp rating. Mm -hmm. This has been your ToddFun.com tech tip of the day. Hey, I think I like the sound of that. I mean, Todd, Todd, Todd fun tip. Okay. Uh, Informative, like it. Yeah. Neat. So I wasn't totally wrong, and I did actually know what I was talking about, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, I hate electronics. I know you said that already. Do we have a tech tip tonight? Yeah. What, what else are you getting to? Though? I don't know. I got all these pages of, of notes. Well, go back to page one because we screwed up. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you started on page. Well, let's finish page six while we're at it. Oh, okay. Um, behind you, to your left, you will see a small pile of parts for for Michael Magnuson, oh. who is in Sweden. No. Okay. Belgium. He's in Belgium. Okay. He's in the place where the Swedish chef is from. So probably Sweden. Okay. Um, I would like for you, how uh, you got a, pe a pinball resource order coming up? Are you going to order from him anytime soon? Mm. Or can you put in a? Yeah, I probably have one or two. I only have two, two, one or two items right now. So. Okay, because I uh, I want to get him. But if you have a few, I can. Uh, a pair of bumper caps and a pair of bumper bodies and a pair of bumper bases. Um, from Pinball Resource to ship to the place where the Swedish what chef is from. What, what yeah, he's, he's he's told me, and I got to I'll email you. It's not terribly relevant. Okay. But hello, Michael. I'm going to order your parts, and then we're going to ship them to Sweden rather than than him making two separate orders from the states because we want to help sure, him out. Okay, do it. Cool. So that we appreciate Michael Magnuson. He's a cool dude. Yes. He uh, is. Cards twenty five ninety nine new YouTube channel raised movie reviews blah, blah, blah. new uh, raised movie reviews should just be a, should be a complete YouTube channel. It's well, I'm not a movie critic. They're hungry. What was that movie I'm supposed to watch? Eight heads in a duffel bag. What? Why? Joe Pesci. It's it's kind of stupid. Don't watch it. <laughs> it's about a hitman that is on a plane, doesn't like to fly. He killed eight people and proof of the. He wiped out a mob. He was a mob hit. It was proof that he killed the people. He cut their heads off, put them in a duffel bag. And he was on his way to, to deliver them to get paid. And his bag, his duffel bag, matched a college student's duffel bag. So they, they got mixed up at the airport. <laughs> the college student uh, goes home with a duffel bag and oh, finds out there's heads in it. Wow. And the hitman, Joe Pesci, finds out there's clothes in his. And his payers said, your head's going to be in the bag if you don't get <laughs> had to be there. It's a useless movie made in 2000. I don't think there's any good movies made in 2000. <laughs> I think it was 2007. Imagine.
I have to go back. <laughs> no? Well, how would you explain it? Movies should be better uh, in the later years. It was on Encore, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of idea. It's a subscription. It just looked different. I thought, well, that's different. It reminds me of uh, what was the one with Rutger Holler in it? Uh, oh, that movie was much better Hobo than you built it. That, that Hobo, movie was okay. Hobo with shot. Uh, yes. There's a clever title. That was not nearly as bad as you said it was. Very clever title. <laughs> Hobo with shotgun. I got it this week. I got, I got it. You got that. Um, last night, and I couldn't watch it, and I was surprised because when I saw who was in it, I thought, how is it that I haven't seen this movie? Um, it had Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Schwarzenegger. And I like Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, you know, for the most part. Yeah. Um, but I'd never seen it, and I couldn't make it through it. It's called it End, End of Days. Oh, that ain't a bad movie. It's stupid. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's terrible. No, it isn't. There's a lot of facts in that movie. That's kind of neat. It had, it had Robin Tunney in it. She's, she's kind of hot. Okay. Well, I don't know who that but, is, but... Yeah, that, that covers Ray's movie reviews. Although well, I, I, I liked that movie. That movie was, it was, I couldn't watch it. You mean I got to try again? Because I couldn't watch it. It was horrible. Do you follow any religious facts at all, Mike, or theories? No. Because if you don't, if you don't, you're not going to get it. It's got a lot of things to think about in it. It's not all free for all. It, okay. It just looks stupid. All right. Alright, that takes care of page three, or page six, I don't know why. Okay, go back to where you were, now we're on track. How about the beginning? Yes, go ahead, do it. Douchebag of the Week Award. Planetary Pinball. Planetary Pinball. Or somebody associated with them. Uh, you know, I was pissed off about those duck stickers. Did we ever talk about the duck stickers? No. Just off camera. Yeah. The stupid duck stickers. Right. Because they got to come with that little licensed by planetary. Hologram. <laughs> they got to come with this hologram sticker. And we don't use that. And we don't the, use that. And they're, and they're the same garbage That's... printed garbage from. Can't get right. <laughs> <laughs> can't get right. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who that is. So, so you so you pay what? Oh, oh and it, <laughs> and listen, you can't get them from anywhere. Can't get... You can't get them from anywhere except Bay Area Amusements. And what happened last time I ordered from them? Do you remember what, what did they charge? <coughs> shipping on these thirty five dollars. <laughs> it was like it was like eighty dollars of shipping on. <laughs> well, <clears throat> so let's take that even further. Um, a guy by the name of John bought two parts boards from me this week. The uh, System Six for parts of repair. The, re the rebuild. Williams Pinball CPU. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, Level six or uh, system six. So, yeah, right. Um, and often when I, you know, when, when I get a buyer, I like to take a look and see who they are. You know, um, why is he? You know, I don't. It's not like I'm running a, you know, doing an investigative report on anybody. But I like to see who's buying and, and who they are because you know who who wants parts boards. And actually, the reason I went looking at him is because I thought I recognized the name and. If you're a repeat buyer, you actually get a different outgoing message with, with the order than you do if you're a first-time buyer. So I wanted to see if he was a repeat buyer. And I see that he is an authorized distributor for Planetary uh, of um, game ROMs. And I sent you a picture of it. I went to the site. With the game ROMs. On eBay. And, yeah. and, and the ROMs, each little ROM has its little holographic sticker Games. on there. Yeah, electronics. A little holographic sticker on there. Did, did you go? To, did yeah. you look at the listing? Did you read it? Mm -hmm. Did you read all of it? <laughs> you did? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, hold on. I, let, let me just see if I can get through a section of this. Because, you know, it may or may not apply to you, Ray. I don't know. But this is in the poor guy's eBay listing. He has to put this in there because um, 
I don't know. Somebody somebody wrote all that for him to put it in his eBay listing. Yeah. Right. This is a genuine Williams Bally replacement part by permission of Planetary Pinball Supply Inc. It will be shipped bearing an official hologram seal signifying as such. Please familiarize yourself with the software license at the end of this listing. Williams Electronics Games Inc. software license. Please read this license carefully. Now I wonder if this applies to you only if you if you buy, like if I were to buy his ROM, then this license would apply to it. But if I don't buy this, then this license. I don't see how it applies. Like, no, you with me? Well, you're only dealing with a small portion of the public that's capable of even programming okay. a device. Well, uh, well, but apparently not, because you because you wrote this this software agreement. Oh my God! Uh, number one, license the software installed through this process. Software and any related documentation provided to you are licensed to you by Williams Electronic Games Inc. or its affiliate, affiliates, Williams, subject to the terms and conditions in this license agreement. Williams retains title to the software and related documentation. Uh-oh, you were reading some of that earlier. This license allows you to use the software only in the specific pinball games manufactured by Williams and marketed under the Williams or Bally trademark for which the software was intended, quote, pinball. To do this, you are permitted to transfer the software into a flash ROM device in the pinball game. If it applies, right? <clears throat> other, than uh, other than the copy of the software installed for you during this process, one archival copy thereof, and the flash ROM copies for installation into the pinball game, you may make no copies of the software. You may not transfer or sublicense your license rights in the software to another party or distribute copies of the software, except that you may install flash ROM copies of the software into pinball games owned by others as part of servicing such pinball games, provided, provided the, the owners <coughs> of the pinball games read and agree to accept the terms and conditions of this license agreement and provided you do not charge an additional fee for the provision of the flash ROM copy of the software. Under no circumstances may you sell copies of the software, including flash ROM copies. You may not publish the software. Get that crap out of here. Did you have any thoughts on any of all of that? That was just section one for Jesus Lord. Oh, How are you going to get your the provided the owners read and agree to accept the terms of and conditions of this license? I can't get people to read two lines in bold print of what an item is that they're buying. Like stupid eBay question, e, stupid eBay question of. Of the of the of the week, right? You got one. You know what it is. It's the usual. I work things out with that other nut. <laughs> no, I don't know what the other stupid. Sure you do. It's the same thing. It always is. It was on the NSM amp. Uh, the the the. Here's the. I'll give you the title of of the listing, and then you can pay us. The, the NSM amp. What? NSM PCB lighter plate part number amp. For parts or repair. That's the title. Now, what is the stupid question? NSM amp. Yes, for parts or repair. Oh, does it work? Yeah. Oh, that was. I thought that was last week. Yeah, I don't know. It's this week then. Is this item in working order? Yeah, is it in working order? And yeah, I remember. You idiot! I don't know, Mike. The guy just didn't read. That's all. Uh. But we, we won't have to worry about him again. I did not answer his question. I just blocked him as a buyer because... I've had enough of your stupid questions! That's a conversation that I kind of had with Pop this morning. I was sitting... Mm -hmm. Mom went to watch over the, the uh, Lucy thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sitting there with Pop and his advice to me was something to the, to the tune of... Uh, stop... Uh, it wasn't about being righteous, but it was a, a stop... 
taking, giving so much power to principles as far as, uh, you know, everybody's out to take a piece of your ass. So, you know, when you get an opportunity to take a piece of somebody else's ass, do it. You believe that? Mm -hmm. so that's something I'm contemplating. So, are you going to do it? Well, I don't know. You know, <laughs> basically, stop trying to be so nice and take care of everybody else's priorities and everybody else's, you know, anything you'll, you'll do to jump in and help somebody, you'll mm -hmm. do. Uh, but quit that shit and get yours. I don't, I don't know how to put that into practice, but I blocked this buyer. I don't want a stupid buyer. I worked things out with the other Yahoo. Idiot. Can't read two lines of, of listing. But we have lots of fun new items on our eBay store. Our eBay store's been rocking. It's been doing really, really well. A lot of work you put into it. I, I didn't read the, I'm, I don't need to read the rest of this software agree, agreement, but you know, that, it's that's a bunch of bullshit. Well, it's called legalese. Yeah, well, this is, this is like, you know, what can I do to make it harder to service this equipment? And they're chasing pennies over, well, you know, this is a, it's a wasted, it's a wasted paper is what it is. So they're trying to get that aspect of this the same way to go as what the genius video industry people did. No, we're not going to release any OEM original boards that go into games. Uh, we don't want to do anything to support the video game industry. We're going to kill it. Yeah, so did, therefore, we don't, yeah, we don't want any boards made, any software run on any game. Of course, they couldn't control the Chinese market because the multi k board was made. And it will take coins to play. I wonder what's going on with the uh, ROM, ROM pin girl. And you can install... A multi-cade board, which is about this big. Hmm, I-cade. Well, multi-cade, I-cade. There's yeah. several different uh, names for it, but it's the Chinese knockoff video games, yeah. and they they mock uh, or mimic uh, Pac-Man, Astro, everything, all of it. So you can put one of those in a dedicated game and shut all the other games off, and it'll appear that it's the original game. You know, they can't control that market. These uh, American companies, you know, they'd like to, like Atari and Williams and Midway and such, you know, they, they uh, single-handedly killed the video game industry by limiting, with this kind of jargon, uh, no, we're not going to allow any, you cannot reproduce or copy or allow any other than what was made, you can fix what was there, they're, they're not supporting it, so it'll die, and it is died. And the, 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 Yeah, they're not helping anything, they're getting in the same way. You know, all you're doing if you fix video games nowadays, commercially or as a hobby, you're just doing it j just to see how long it's going to work. Because it's old. How long is it going to work? It's 36 plus years old. Yeah, you can get it to work. But how long is it going to work? Is it going to be reliable? Who the heck knows? What do you think? It's 36 years old. And it's complex. And a lot of the... Uh, th they should have allowed the, th the industry to continue supporting it by making aftermarket boards. Like, oh, my Pac-Man Pac board failed. Here's the new replacement. Put it in. Done. Done, yeah. New board. Not repaired old stuff. Um, okay, as well. carefully as you do it, how good are you going to be with it? You're not. This, this stuff's 30-something years old. That's boring. Uh, let's 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 move on to something Well, else. it's relative to what you just said about that. That's, well, I'm going to take, take it to the next place, which is... Very similar. So just just hold that thought and now put oh, it. I'm done with this. And, and now now move it to this. Jeff forty one thirty, which is Chrome Molly, by the way. Um, first again, so you guys are only a small part of a bigger issue, and that YouTube has a major DMCA issue, which is a legal term for I forget what. Uh, a lot of legit videos channels are getting pulled because some cool cat content and it gets the butt hurts over honest bad reviews. Hopefully, YouTube does the right thing in all this. Uh, the YouTube, the other, the old YouTube channel, which uh, last week I put the first 14 minutes and 59 seconds of the episode up on the old channel and then said, go visit the new channel. Uh, I still don't know. We, I mean, we have two channels. I don't know what 
the content is going to end up being on them both when they're both in good standing. But we'll worry about that later. In the meantime, don't unsubscribe. We'll just have two channels and the content will be separated somehow. Okay. okay. Um, lawyer stuff. We might as well talk about this, right? Did you see uh, Fred's response? His, his email response. Well, I, I have it here. Um, he referred us back to Bruce, kind of, or he copied us back to Bruce. And uh, it's a he said, she said here, right? So I guess I'll, I guess I'll read this. It's not really that long. Um, I said to him, uh, both videos and questions have been cleared by YouTube. I assume that no one from YouTube actually reviewed them and that Evergreen simply did not respond to the counter no notifications we submitted on the both. To which he said that would be typical. Uh, the original channel is reinstated under restriction because of the first strike on the video we did not counter notify. To which he said, I don't know whether or not you can still send a counter notice on the first strike. I can. Uh, but I don't think it would hurt to send a counter notice now. You may be able to remove the first strike. Uh, the reason I didn't counter notify on the first video was because it was their content. It was, you know, 98% their content. It was the jukebox playing their record. Uh, well, can I ask you a question? Uh -huh. There was other times that you played that these music um, companies or representatives of mm. objected, and they didn't strike it. They just said, please don't do it. I mean, isn't the uh, Elvis thing, didn't they say, please don't? Yes, Elvis, yes, El the Elvis video. They didn't video strike bomb. it. They didn't maliciously no. be mean about it. These people were kind of mean. Yes. Uh, well, they, yeah, that's, uh, th th that's true, but it is also uh, legally irrelevant. Um, well, all right, th fine. Th so... The reason I didn't counter notify on that is because I didn't feel, there I go with, that's, you know, the conversation I'm having with, with Pop about principles. I, I'm not, I, ha, I don't have justification to, to counter notify that. No, because it was um, use of their material. So that's why I didn't, um, and to do so puts them, you know, it, it gives them a legal chip um, because now I'm doing something that's, that's not kosher mm -hmm. uh, so that's my response to that section is I'm, I'm not going to do that but but in a very similar way I did consider uh, submitting a takedown notice on some content from you know a super tramp video or a uh, Roger Hodgson video or whatever and just claim and do what they did and just claim ownership of something that doesn't belong to them, I can claim ownership of something that doesn't belong to me. I did contemplate doing that. I don't know. I'll get back to you. If I do it three times in a row, I can knock the channel down. And then they'll have to sue us and they can come see what we're worth. And I don't know how that turns out. All right. Well, what else are you? <laughs> uh, I reviewed your fair use. I, I reviewed your, oh, I said, I reviewed your fair case law. Okay. It's not a case of of fair use. Uh, our complaint is that the third third video contained no copyrighted video and that Ev Evergreen manually and maliciously submitted the takedown notice without any legal justification, blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, to which Fred says, uh, and there's some case law here, one of the problems we face in this area of law is that there are not many cases that reach court and then very few of those are appealed to a higher court. So we have fewer data points in, on which to analyze the issues. Uh -huh. So, so when he goes looking for well, what happens here? There isn't a lot of evidence. Yeah, because it wouldn't go to court. Yeah, uh, there's a list of people that have complaints on chat, you know, on Google forums about what has happened to them from Evergreen, but that's not a legal, you know, that's not a legal case law of such and such took so and so to court and won so and so. Uh, if it doesn't get to court, well, then there's no precedent. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, seems pretty clear to me, he says, that um, 
that they did what I said they did, which was claim a takedown notice on something that didn't belong to them. Mm -hmm. um, frivolous litigation. There is a little bit of case law, so on and so forth. A similar case he found there was they were awarded one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars at the end of it, which is pilly squat. Um, the big questions are: Can we sue on this basis? What are our chances of winning? How much does Evergreen have to take? How much can we win? Also, regarding legal fees for this battle, we would prefer to have confident legal counsel willing to bill fees to the defendants as damages. We would hope that they have blah, 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 so on, so on, so I was asking him to do it on a contingency basis because we don't have the money to pursue this case unless the case pays for the case. Uh, to which he said, uh, filing the case ten to $20,000, taking it to verdict can exceed $100,000, and if the winnings are $125,000, we're not going to do that. Uh, Long story short here, Ray, I carbon copied at the bottom of this, uh, Aaron Brockovich and, and Ed Masry. Um, Aaron Brockovich will be played by me. I'm Aaron Brockovich. <laughs> um, I that, was, need, that was a good movie. I need to find, if it's not Fred, I haven't talked to him yet, in spite of me asking him to call me several times. Uh, I need to find, if it's not Fred, uh, Ed Masry to step in and be the uh, representative for uh, principles mm -hmm. here. Um, yeah, and we can look at all the people that have been wronged by this bullying and they get away with it because nobody's got the money uh, to push it to court. Mm -hmm. That's where we stand on it. Mm -hmm. So if uh, your name is Ed Masry and you happen to be watching our pro program, please call me. Yeah. Hmm? Good, good uh, comparison. I like that. Well, I don't know what else to do. Uh, listen, we are not rich. Uh, I don't have $100,000 lying around, laying around. Part, I, I, I need to go back to grammar school. I should call Bill. Um, <laughs> call Bill. Yeah. So we're the little guy. Um, I don't know. It's Evergreen Social Media Associates. Please look into that. Uh, see if you can find out who they are. I had a name, I forget I forget off the top of my head, um, but I couldn't prove that it was him, I don't know. That's, a, that's as far as I got with that. Right. You got any feelings about that? Yo Fred, contingency basis man, earn your money, show some balls. Really? Can you win or can't you? Pussy foot and sh I don't like that. I didn't like it, right? Well, I, I guess he'd have to go on them groups and see if any of them guys want to No, they to didn't. Go. They're all scared to death. Because nobody's got that kind of money and they're all scared to death. They're all little little people that put up little goofy videos and they got don't know how to fight it. Okay. Much like us. But I don't know. You know, the one a couple of people got mad enough to post videos about it and that you know that's as far as Let's I, play another that's, record that's from as far uh, as I got. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't have that. I got I got you got, you got you got some of you got yeah, some of those. Yeah, yeah. Let's can, play it. I, I just want to break them. I want to put it. I want to pee I on. I want them. to put a half hour on our channel of it. Well, they, it, it'll certainly earn us an, a new restriction, Ray. That's what'll happen there. I want to open my own channel, uh, <laughs> Buford TV, yeah. and I want to put a half hour on it. Okay, you do that. And I want to keep opening a channel up every day and putting a half hour on and okay. all the channel 365 I can help you with this but here's what you got to do so you got to open all the channels first because you know you can't open a new channel to offset the fact that your channel got killed yeah. right so we got to open all the channels first and, oh. and and then and then you get, well I don't know I got better things to do than that right I'm just kidding come on oh my lord don't you, you, you like check it out humor. like check it out cars 25 at uh, 99 uh, maybe Mike should whip up a theme song with his musical talents. Screw working on pinball machines all day. Get your priorities straight. So he's saying that I should write our, our own music. You don't have any feelings on that at all? I'm not musically 
talented yeah. at all. Zero. Well, uh, I, I'm I'm kind of middle of the road talented. So I like listening to it. So um, because it's middle of, because I'm middle of the road talented. It, I appreciate it the effort it takes to do it, play it, create it, write it, this and that. But that's as far as I. Can. It takes me ten times as much effort. Well, you're not going to believe this, but we're almost out of footage. So. Were there any tech tips in, yeah, I guess we, we talked about Mark's thing. Um, we've got one minute left, Ray. Let's visit the Black Knight if you don't mind. And we'll talk about that. In because, a minute? Because, well, we got a minute to talk about it. And uh, it'll be, it'll, an, take more than it'll be an, another, well, it's just a, a 25 second review of what we're going to do there. Oh. And what's, what's happening up to speed on the Black Knight. What is going on with the Black Knight? It has what all the uh, early Black Knights, I think they started putting this in these games. Uh, the, how many do they make of this? 17,000 or something? Or, uh, the upper ball lock area, which contains three balls, if you know, hmm. and then it releases them, but it'll store two without. Uh, the original leaf switches, for some reason, just stopped performing. Uh, how the balls go in here almost from a vertical drop maybe they bounce and the cpu doesn't read it and who knows um but the way to fix this is the williams kit which gives you special hardware bracket and micro switches instead of leaf switches and we're going to look into that in the future yeah it needs it because it's almost done and we don't sell stuff that doesn't work properly no our other one had to be Say bye. Thank you, everybody. See you next time. You want a puppy? I want to sit in the chair. <laughs> <clears throat> Puppies, right? Puppies. Puppies.